folks. Welcome back to the Acoustic Shop channel. I am John, this is Jeremy. We're gonna be doing something a little bit different today. We are going to talk about the cheapest guitar that Eastman makes and the very most expensive guitar. Can you tell can the you difference? Can you hear the difference? I don't know if you can. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. We're gonna find out right after this. So here we are back one more time. Jeremy Chapman sitting right next to me, picking the fine guitar. Jeremy loves doing these videos because it gives him a chance to recognize that guitars are much better than mandolins and you can in the right create, hands. You can create way better music with a guitar than yeah, you can with Chris a mandolin. Is, Chris Thiele's struggling well, a little I, bit. I, I, just imagine if he played guitar. Yeah, I know, he'd be something. Anyway, <laughs> today, what are we doing? We, we, this is a trend you see online all the time. Can you tell the difference between the worst and the best coffee? Well, you? we want to know, can you tell the difference between the lowest priced Eastman and the most expensive Eastman, which we have an example of both of them here. They do have a pretty big variance in price range, mm -hmm. yeah. and there's good reason. We'll go over some of the reasons that that one is more expensive than this one. But it all comes down to playability, tone, and I guess some appearance stuff. It looks, it looks very important to you. So, so we're going we're gonna to ask you guys what you think. Is it worth the extra? Can you tell the difference? That's right. Before we get into all that stuff, though, we really would love it if you guys subscribe to the channel here. Uh, you can hit the bell. You can hit the thumbs up. Do that. Hit the comments. Uh, tell us what you guys think. Subscribe. Tell us. You gotta, well, yeah, the bell. I think that gives you your subscribe. The bell is the notifications. It's a, I don't know. These guys are live or they just released a new video. I don't know. I don't even watch us. I'm not going to watch this. You should subscribe. I'm not going to do it. I wouldn't sit through this. Anyway, uh, do that and also join all our other social medias. As always, there's a complete performance video where you get to hear both of these guitars. Let me say folks. that again. There is a complete <laughs> performance video. Like our biggest comment where we get bashed is, I sat through 30 minutes and listened to you talk and you played 10 seconds. No, we have a full song of these so these instruments being right. played. It's in the, the uh the details and comments, or not even comments, it's in our description below. A right. link that will take you right to, to that. You can skip this whole video if you don't want to hear us talk. And then you can get to the other video, which is the complete performance video. We will have a tone sample at the end of this that you can just hear these guitars by themselves. In fact, actually, in this time, we're not going to probably do a it's tone a sample. We're going to be doing a shootout. So you'll kind of get a link to go directly to that uh, in there. And again, like I said, comment, please share, talk about it, because the more you do that, the more we get to continue doing this YouTube channel that we love doing so much so and those of you who do like all the talking thank you very much i i like to talk yeah. about guitars that's that's what we got <laughs> in the business for that's what we're right. here for so all right so here's what we got. we got eastman guitars you guys know we do a lot of them um so this was an easy one right because we are now officially the world's largest acoustic dealer for eastman guitars and uh, that gives us the opportunity to get to see everything we got some uh world firsts we as even, well as premieres we even get called before things are made now that's right that's and cool. help in design and all kinds of fun stuff so it is really cool but we were going to do one. It's like, what is the cheapest sound, uh, cheapest guitar out there and the most expensive guitar out there? And we decided, well, let's narrow that down a little bit. We may still do that other video. So, so be aware if you want to hear the cheapest guitar versus the best guitar that we can find, uh, we may just still get that. But in the Eastman line, we actually are able to kind of get it a little tighter. And this is actually going to be a little bit closer race than I think a lot of you are going to uh, recognize. And what that is, the PCH line is their kind of starter line. The PCH line, Jeremy's holding a AC122 uh, CE, which is a cutaway grand auditorium guitar, laminate sides and back uh, with a solid spruce top. Open pour finish. That's right. So again, when Eastman first told us they were gonna be doing the PCH series, I remember John was a little concerned. I was we, very concerned. We were brand new, uh, we were early on into the Eastman uh, brand, or brand ambassadors where we really start to create a good following in the Springfield and Southwest Missouri area. This was before we were doing a lot of online. Oh, yeah. And we were really kind of dissuading the opinion from people that it's gotta be a cheap instrument. So we were showing these are some quality instruments and we're giving all the features of them and the price point was very affordable. And then they said, hey, we're getting ready to do this entry level guitar, a laminate back and side, solid top. And one of your big concerns was, we've been trying to tell people how great quality these are and all of a sudden you're gonna put a sub A cheap guitar out here. That's basically it. It was like, you're going to put out a cheap guitar and, and it's going to ruin all of the headway that we've all been able to make with customers that, hey, these are great guitars. So they did send us the first batch. I was blown away. Great sounding guitars. And uh, we just... Just nothing in the price point like that. No. Like the, we've talked about this in the past. We're both uh, instructors. We teach lessons. 
and finding that entry level guitar or mandolin or banjo that is going to help the student to become better. You can you can buy less expensive guitars than this. You can buy less expensive mandolins than I recommend, but normally they're just so poorly set up. Mm -hmm. They don't sound good. They're difficult to play. This is, it blew us away as in the price range, yep. there's really nothing better than this that we found. That's correct. So real quick, rundown of features of this. Like you said, laminated sides and back, solid spruce top, bow nut and saddle. They come with a lifetime warranty and a gig bag now. Trust uh, rod. Yeah, adjustable trust rod, of course, uh, which is different than what uh, they originally came out. No gig bags were with the originals. Now they do have it. This has a pickup already installed. It is actually, I believe, a Fishman pickup uh, that is uh, that has the Eastman logo on it, or at least some variants of such. Um, great little guitars. And right around the $400 price point streetwise, uh, now they were a little bit less. Prices, as you all know, keep going up on all kinds of things that we want to see. Um, so anyway. Something that also impressed us in this is they still hand voice the solid yes. tops on this. Even in this price point, they're still scalping the braces. A truly hand-built guitar, hand-voiced. A lot of the features, boutique style, if you will. Um, Which I think that's the thing I found the most with the other brands where we were talking about that are less expensive, is they don't spend that extra time voicing them to keep the cost down. Mm -hmm. So you end up with some that are probably a lot thicker than they should be. I think they're erring on the side of caution where they're building them Absolutely. To, to not fall Blow apart. Up. Yeah, so, <laughs> Don't so explode say, on All right, me, please. This is, the, this is, we need it to be at least this thick so that our our weakest pieces of wood won't explode. Right. So then even you know stiffer pieces of wood are treated that way. And so you get this inconsistency where just tone wise, they're just too thick of tops really. Yep. And this way, they're, they're hand voicing the top, scalping the bracing, and it makes a big difference. Absolutely. So that's the PCH line. Uh, I am holding here an AC 922. Uh, 922 for the AC line or the modern style builds is their top of the line. This has every bell and whistle thrown at it that you could possibly put. It comes with a LR Bags Anthem uh, pickup already installed, has rosewood sides and back with a gorgeous, I want to say, this is a European spruce top, might even be a Italian spruce top. It looks gorgeous. Uh, really cool bear claws, a flamey top right in here. Inlays all the way up through. Wood binding and this gorgeous bevel right here. Gloss uh, finish, this is a lacquer finish or their true tone finish. Uh, gold Goto tuners. Um, just like I said, every bell and whistle, oh, look at this a sound port in the side. It's like your own studio monitor facing right back at you to hear it. So um, that is really cool. And this guitar has the the new uh, tone tight <coughs> neck system, which is kind of their pairing with the uh, bourgeois uh, deal that system, now they're yeah. kind of going together, which is their neck system that they use to bolt them all together. And, I mean, the um, inlay on it's just impeccable. Uh, I love the way they did that around that arm bevel. Yes. It just looks yeah, classy, classy. Blend. I like the binding too. This is all wood binding in here, no plastic. It almost uh, looks like a, a snake wood or something. Well, that's what I was really curious about. I've been looking at this, and I think it looks like snake wood. Um, but I looked online, and they're claiming it to be a maple, which kind of makes sense yeah. too. It'd be that's a flamed striping. maple striped. But they, what they did was their classic. Uh, Stain. Stain, which is kind of a dark brownish kind of color. And I can see where doing that to a maple binding with the flame in it will kind of give you yeah. that kind of deal. But it looks gorgeous either way. Uh, wood purfling, all the kind of uh, extras that you would want. Uh, again, same sort of style of build. Again, this, just, this kind of lives up to what we had been really worried about them devaluing. Yeah. It's just showing the ability of these craftsmen over there that this isn't someone that you can just get in a factory job and they can put together an instrument like this, or even you know the hang voicing of these. It takes some skilled craftsmen, mm -hmm. and that's kind of Eastman's thing. Uh, Chen said originally that got him inspired about starting Eastman was they were putting out some, the, he was a rep for some import Chinese instruments, mm -hmm. and he said, I know that we have some craftsmen over there that can, that can do a much better job yeah. than, than we're uh, showcasing here. So he did find some great luthiers of instruments and woodworkers that the inlay on this and some of the, the work is just showing how skilled these laborers are. So it's a good example on that guitar of their extreme level and then this one in just affordability and still good mm -hmm. quality instrument. Now, we're talking about the big differences. Normally when we talk about inexpensive guitars versus expensive guitars, we talk about the setups and playability and all that kind of stuff. I'll be honest with you, I don't think we're going to be able to talk about that a ton in these two guitars because they do get set up very well in both cases. Now. This does play slightly easier, and I think they do pay it to, a little more attention to it. But overall, the playability of both of these guitars is very similar. 
Where I think the player experience is going to be a lot better on the 922 is that beveled armrest. Uh, it is so comfortable to play. It's right where your arm needs to be. It feels good in the hand. The neck shapes are a little bit nicer. The sound I, port, I think, surprised us how it much. It is a big difference. And it actually even makes a difference in the sound uh, forward on the guitar, too. I've been doing tests with uh, customers, and I kind of just cover it up and let them hear what it sounds like without and then with. It's a big difference in there, too. So player experience is probably going to be more of it than the playability. Um, obviously, tone is going to be different, so we're going to go find out exactly how much of a difference. Now, I think we got a little bit of a skewed uh, judgment here on this particular one because the guitar you have right there is actually a thermo-cured PCH, and we've been seeing a few of those show up uh, from Eastman due to the lack of uh, woods that are available in uh, all guitar manufacturers. Eastman actually was able to solve this problem. Sitka spruce has been hard for a lot of guitar manufacturers to get a hold of. So at least to get dried out woods because it took so long uh, to import stuff and export stuff out that uh, they had a, you know, like everybody else, have to wait on this wood to fully cure, fully dry before they can build with it. Well, Eastman got ahead of everybody and they've actually now have a facility to do their own thermo curing or torification. And they were able to then make these guitars uh, quicker to the market because they could do their own torification, thus drying it out earlier and getting it ready to use. It's kind of an unannounced is, bonus on some of these It is a major bonus. In a very entry level instrument, you're getting a thermo cured top, which a lot of times the upgrade would cost more than this guitar from that other is, manufacturers. That is absolutely true. And, so, and that brings up a point too. When we say we're comparing uh, inexpensive to an inexpensive guitar, that's a relative term because yes. still Eastman's top of the line most expensive isn't even hitting the no. entry level of some we of the other brands. We haven't even hit $3,000 yet on this guitar, I don't think. I think it's right around the $2899, somewhere right in there. Again, they'll correct this in the graphics of, to tell you that I'm wrong. So. Where would you give one of those? <laughs> well, that's our team. They'll have to fix all that. You guys, uh, make sure that you fix all the mistakes. I want one of those, I I want one of those where they overdub your voice in there, so it's just like, and this one comes at $48.99.58. I think that'd be great. Let's do that. Anyway, um, this, uh, like I said, tons and tons of features on this guitar. It's a feature rich guitar. Um, overall, the same exact body shape. It is different woods, um, but overall, we're talking about a similar deal. So it's going to make it a lot easier to make that comparison. Somewhat apples to apples. Grainy apples versus. Uh, yeah, I think that's Fuji. where we're going. Uh, and uh, I think I might have a honey crisp right okay. here. So, <laughs> anyway, so what we're going to do is kind of uh, play this stuff. We're going to switch back and forth. Uh, obviously, a little bit warmer, Richard. And we're going to let John do most of the side by sides because there's a technique difference here. So, there you go. Um, you Still, can kind of hear a little bit of those. If this was my first guitar, I strum that, I'd be like, I'll take two of them. Yeah, I think they're absolutely fabulous. So. All right, so what we're going to do now is get ready for a kind of a comparison test here and see what you guys think. Is the cheapest guitar Eastman makes better or worse than the most expensive guitar they make? And can it's you justify the difference you. in price? Maybe. Probably. Let's find Maybe out. Not. Do it. Go. Okay.
So, John, what do you think? Well, I, I mean, is there a difference? Can you hear a difference first? Can I hear a difference? I absolutely can hear. Do you think it. the, the question people is, listening can hear? Can a they hear a difference? I, think I they would will. assume that you can hear a difference. I think even if we weren't going for the cheapest guitar versus the most expensive guitar, I think you would hear a difference. Um, you know, obviously, there's that question of what, how much difference is it worth to you? There's a, there are a few different things. Um, I'm going to say, let's talk further though into that. I, you know, you may actually love the sound of this guitar. There may be a, a, a person out there that loves the brighter, the crisper, a little bit more woody, kind of chunky sound to that guitar than what this one has, a more focused, <clears> detailed <throat> tone with a little richer lows, a little, you know, yeah, a little more expanded uh, palette of overall uh, frequencies. Again, that's a, that's a personal choice. Um, I've known a lot of people that are great, great players that play inexpensive instruments, make them sound wonderful, and that's the sound they're looking for. So I guess, you know, there's that. But let's talk about playability, the feel, all that kind of stuff. Did I feel a major difference? You know what I was surprised about? Genuinely, I thought these would be set up very, very similar and play equal. Ends up not quite. Um, I actually preferred the playability of this guitar. I know part of that is this arm bevel. Part of it is the overall setup. It stands the reason that they are probably spending a little bit more time in the setup. And a lot of the difference, if people say, why is one instrument more expensive than the other? A lot of it time. comes down to time. Time, and time. Even time. this one, they they came up with things like the. Uh, open pour finish, which just means they probably eliminated hours and hours of sanding, and sanding, filling. filling, spraying, then sanding again, then spraying to get that gloss finish to look perfect. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of hours and a lot of repetition, a lot of uh, room for mistakes and errors to come in. Yep. Where this is just that one coat, uh, maybe two coat process where they don't fill all those pores in the wood, saves them a lot of hours in that. The same with setup. I imagine they probably can spend more mm -hmm. time on that guitar because it is a premium. And then materials. I mean, abalone. A higher end tuners, better pickup, all those things are going to add extra cost. Absolutely. So, and another thing we didn't talk about much, I know we said that this comes with a really nice gig bag, hard shell case, there's a value there, at least a couple hundred dollars. Um, so, you know, I think, I, I, I honestly think that everybody out there probably heard a difference. Whether it's worth it to you, I don't know. Here's what I think is, is the best news for you. Unlike when I was learning to play and the generation before me learning to play, you can honestly get a inexpensive, even less expensive than this guitar and have a great playing wonderful guitar in this modern time. I have seen $200 guitars that played a lot better than very expensive guitars from the era when I was learning to play. Um, the quality has gone way up. You should be able to find a great quality uh, intermediate beginner level guitar uh, without having to spend a fortune. <laughs> What's even more amazing is you can get a professional now guitar, level guitar, and not have to spend as much as some of the brands that are out yes. there. So my conclusion is you get a lot of bang for your buck by going to a more expensive guitar. There are not only sound improvements, there are playability improvements, there are pride functions, there, there and there is, pride. there is nothing wrong with accepting the fact that when you pull out an instrument from its case and it looks gorgeous to you and you are excited to see it, it inspires you to play differently than what you would play it's even as a professional. Similar to having like a new car or something. Like Absolutely. You get your, your, your old beater and you don't, it doesn't give you any pride and you kind of park it wherever in the parking lot. You get a new car for the first time and there's a bit of a you know excitement about it. You park it at the very end of the lot away from all the other cars. I, I still do it to this day. I, so it, it's a, My wife loves me for it. A pride and ownership that I think every consumer has has of having a nice and there's clothing. a value in dress that. for success i've heard Absolutely. i made that up right now <laughs> dress for success folks did you make that up right fake now? it till you make it and dress for success wow jeremy you no, have come up with some today. amazing lines there's a value in that and it's uh, i i overuse the analogy to golf clubs but again you if you bought the most you inexpensive do. clubs it makes the game more difficult um you're not that proud or excited about it if you would buy a decent set it it's more forgiving they actually build better quality ones so that if you hit the ball a little off center, you still get a good shot, where those real cheap ones, you have to be very precise. So it's it's sometimes harder to really get the skill of playing an instrument or golf if you get the least expensive option out there, where if you can upgrade to something like this that plays really well, it's not going to hold you back. You're going to learn sure. very good on this. Absolutely. Eventually, you kind of reward your, your efforts with an upgrade in appearance and playability. And again, inspiration. I cannot tell you 
what that is worth in a higher quality instrument instrument um, not just in playability and sound but there is and when you get a new instrument it inspires you artistically musically to do things that you've never done before and uh, even if you know that you are out of the market you cannot afford one of these really high-end instruments i encourage you to someday play one even though you're you know maybe to be scared we, we encourage you come into the shop if you look at these uh six thousand dollar guitar and you're like boy i'd never spend that kind of money do it it'll you'll be amazed at what it will actually inspire out of you and you may find that you want to save up for something like that i had to do it i keep showing I up at the, to, at the tesla to. lot and I, I pack my wallet full of toilet paper so it looks really thick so they give me test drives i'm like <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm considering this one, but let me try the blue one. <laughs> it's not true. We don't even have a Tesla dealer, but I would do that. It's because they thing. sell direct. You, know, you right. didn't know that, right? I, it, it's irrelevant. We're talking about <laughs> the, the excitement of getting to test drive one of these instruments. Uh, Absolutely. We've got some great ones in the shop, and we never discourage anybody from playing them. I go to other music stores and try some incredible instruments just to see what's out there and get the feel for it and enjoyment. And you may go back to another kind of lower priced one, but you kind of know what's out there and sure. it inspires you to keep practicing to justify that investment. Absolutely. So in the end, yes, I believe you probably heard the difference. I think you could tell. Again, you may disagree. And if you do, please put it in the comments so that I can argue with you online. I am really good at that. And please so. mention how much we talked versus <laughs> how much we played. We'd love to hear about that. So there you go, guys. Is a cheaper guitar sound different than a more expensive guitar from Eastman? Now you have your conclusions. You tell us what you think. I told you what I think. See you and next that's time. all that matters to John. That's right. See you next time. appreciate you guys watching that video. It was my favorite it's one we've made so far. We've, we've done hundreds of videos and that was the best one. It was. And the next one's gonna be even better. If you'd like to see that, <laughs> be sure you subscribe to this channel. And also, the more you comment and inter interact below, the more the YouTube algorithms pick it up and start pushing it out to other people, like-minded people. Algorithms? Algorithms, they're everywhere. They permeate the internet and YouTube's got one. And it watches our videos and it sees how much you comment and then it pushes us to other people like you. And we want everyone to experience the, the acoustic shop world where we talk about instruments, we do reviews, we've got some fun videos coming up. We thank you guys so much for being a part of it and we'll see you in the next video.